So we put it on video, which is much easier to do. And I, I talk a little bit about the hotel, and, and I talk about Parkinson's, and I talk about you as the people here. So my friend Jim, right there, Jim Chris, he's one of my best friends. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> He does amazing things with it. The guy is talented, unbelievable talent, and I thank you very much, Jim, for doing this. I'll sit back and watch, please. Hi, I'm going to take a few moments here to talk about my family and friends and my experiences here at the Hampton Inn. And I'm doing it on tape because uh, I'm a kind of an emotional guy, and it's much easier for me to do this on tape, and it's going to make a lot more sense and a better, better presentation for you if I do that, because otherwise I'm going to be bawling and crying. It's going to be a mess if I was to do it in person. This way I can back it out and you won't even know I did it. So anyways, I've kind of lived by a credo of family and friends, nothing else matters. And that has been my the way I've looked at my life, because I think the friends that I've made here and my family and friends outside the hotel are the most important things to me. And I want to take a few minutes here and talk about the Hampton Inn and the things that we've done over the years together and things we've accomplished and whatnot, so bear with me and we might have a little laugh or two along the way. And, uh, I want to start out by telling you about Parkinson's because that's kind of why I'm here today. Uh, I'm retiring from my job because of my condition with Parkinson's. I'm just unable to perform uh, at the level that I used to perform at. And it just makes it difficult for me. I've maintained a real good attitude, I think, about the disease. It's just, whether I have a good attitude or not, it, I have problems with it. And it just it does not permit me to do the job that I'm capable of doing. And uh, I want to take a moment to tell you about Parkinson's itself. Um, when I was sitting one day with Mr. Garner at my desk. This goes back about eight years ago. My hand was on the desk and Tim was looking at it. He says, look at your finger. It was twitching. He said, you know, you should get that checked out. And I said, yeah, I will. So I did. I went in and had it checked out. And the doctor said, that yeah, it's not. It's probably just a nerve damage. So I went on and about two months later, my little finger and my ring fingers were twitching. And I, went into the doctor again. He thought this might be something more serious. And they ran some tests on me and they found out that I had Parkinson's. And the way it diagnosed Parkinson's is, is you eliminate everything else. You cannot, there's no test for Parkinson's. You just eliminate all these different types of diseases or, 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 or uh, ailments or whatever and you're left with Parkinson's. And that's what they did. They told me I had it and it's a it's a disease that is not life-threatening, but it is quality of life uh, threatening. And it, there is no cure for it yet, and it's just one of those things that continually gets worse. And it's something I always have to deal with, and today's probably the best day that I have, because tomorrow it's going to be worse. Um, Parkinson's is, is, is caused from a lack of dopamine in the brain. And what the dopamine does is it makes the signals run smooth, and your thought process, your, the things you do normally, just you do normally without twitching or, or shaking in that. And that's the lack of dopamine is what causes the twitches and the tremors and things like that. So that's what Parkinson's is, is, the, is the lack of dopamine in the brain. The cure for it right now, and it's not really a cure, is that there's medications that help you deal with it. And there's two basic medications. One enables the existing cells in the brain, which by the way, the first time you see any symptoms of Parkinson's, 80% of the brain cells are dead. You're left with 20% that produce dopamine. And that's when you start seeing your symptoms. So they have a drug that makes the existing cells produce more dopamine. And then the other drug is dopamine itself. You swallow and it goes up to the brain and it helps these signals to be more smooth. Now the problem with 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 your medication is it's a constant battle because it's very strong medication. You get a lot of side effects and, and dyskinesia is one of them. It's, it's, a, it's a shaking and twitches in your face and you've probably all seen me do it. 
from time to time I get contortions, and there's other things that go on. So it's kind of a battle of balancing the symptom with the uh, side effect, and which is better and which is worse, and we change it all the time. And right now I'm under pretty good control uh, of, the, of the symptoms. and uh, so. But that's what it is, a battle of the medication versus the ailments themselves. So that's where I am on the Parkinson's issue, and that's why I'm opting to retire at this particular time. I thank you for listening to me. Hope it has been too boring for you. I want to take a few additional moments, though, and tell you about my family and my friends, because they've been a very important part of my life, and they've affected me and my job here, and I think it's important that I give them a little bit of recognition, too. Uh, my wife, Kathy, has has got a long road to haul here with me having Parkinson's, and she's certainly been there for me along the way. She, she has helped me uh, do things that I can't necessarily do for myself anymore, and although sometimes it's been difficult for her, we've always gotten it done, and we've always had a good laugh, and I would be absolutely lost without her. So, Kathy, I want to thank you for, for doing that and being at my side, because I know how difficult it is for you. And, uh, I, honey, I love you, and I do appreciate it. My mom, what can I say? You've been my, you've been my, uh, my shoulder to lean on all these years. You and Dad, my dad isn't with us anymore, but my mom is still there. And mom, you've always been there for me, whether it's been spiritually or motivationally or financially or whatever. You've been my, my crutch, and I know when times get tough, I can always come back to you. And that's the greatest feeling anybody can have, that I've got somebody that I can rely on. Uh, and you've been there for me, Mom, so thanks for being there. Um, my children, Jason and Beth, are very dear to me. Uh, a lot of you know Jason. He's been, uh, he's been employed here as a, as a maintenance person or a houseman. And everybody, I've not heard one bad thing about Jason. He's just a wonderful kid. He had a, he was in a car accident when he was just a baby. He was about five years old. He was in a coma for 30 days. And we didn't know if he was going to live or die. He came out of it and did well. And I'm proud of him. He's going to Baker College now. He's majoring in business. He's got a part-time job to help him with his schooling. And Jason, I love you. You're, I'm real proud of you, son. You've done a great job, and I just want to wish you the best in the future. My daughter Elizabeth, who is just a, a beautiful girl. She's tall and thin and a real knockout. <laughs> I'll tell you, I want to watch the guys coming around you. I may not be there all the time, but I'm going to keep an eye out anyways. She's going to Eastern Michigan University, or excuse me, how dare me, Western Michigan University. God, you kill me, the Broncos. They're at Western. And Beth has been a, a world traveler. She's gone to Germany and Greece and Iceland and Greenland and Italy and Portugal and France and England, all over the place. And I think it's just wonderful that a girl at her age has the opportunity and the will and the desire to do those things. Because I'm 55 years old and I don't think I'll ever see them. So it's good that my daughter Beth has had the opportunity to do that. You've done it, honey. That's very good. She studied to be a teacher. And I want to wish you the best because it's tough teaching kids these days. So I give you one thing. Just take a big stick with you and beat the hell out of them. Beat them. So anyways, honey, I wish you the best and I love you just dearly. Uh, my sister Barbara and her husband Dave have, uh, have been a big factor in my life too. Dave and I are the ones that started my family and friends. Nothing else matters. We talk about it at every holiday and every time we get together because it's important to both of us. We do realize that those are the things that are most important. And my sister Barbara is crazy. She, she does crazy things. Our whole family are nuts. <laughs> Barb seems to be off on the, the nuttier side. <laughs> but I love you, Barb. You're, you're wonderful. And, and I know that I can always come to you if I have a problem. And Dave, I know Dave from back in college at Michigan State. 
Uh, we lived together on the same floor, and that's how we met my sister. Uh, still trying to figure out how that happened. <laughs> and I'd like to thank uh, Kathy's mom, my mother-in-law, Marlene Whitney, who right now is down enjoying herself in uh, Florida, Destin, Florida, having a good time, soaking up the rays. Sure wish we were down there with you, Mom. Uh, you, whenever you've called up here, I know you've always asked one of the first things, how I'm feeling, how I'm doing, and I appreciate that very much. It means a lot to me. And also, something I don't think I ever told you, I know you're a big Notre Dame fan, but I always notice you pull for Michigan State when they're not playing Notre Dame, and that kind of does my heart good, so I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Mom. Wish you were up here. And then, of course, we have Steve and Linda Whitney, Kathy's brother and sister-in-law, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Uh, Steve and I, we played golf for a couple of years there on Golf League, and I, I was the leading guy there. I was carrying the team. And, well, not really. Steve really carried the team. I couldn't shoot where the poop. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed playing with you, Steve. And, uh, and Steve was in the pharmaceutical business and made it possible through his referrals to get me the best a Parkinson's doctor in the area, Dr. Leslie Newman, who heads up the Parkinson's Research Center, and Dr. William Baer, uh, my local physician, who has been an excellent doctor for me. So I thank you for that, Steve. I uh, thank you for those recommendations and, and your help. Uh, and Linda, uh, you've had your problem with your accident, and you've been a guiding light for me uh, to look forward. That things can be bad, but they're all, they can always get better, and that's where I'm headed. I'm looking for the future. And a lot of that has been through your experiences yourself. So thanks to both of you. We miss you. I hope you come back from Chicago soon. I've got my two best friends in the world, uh, Pat Tanetti and Jim Prisby. Uh, Patrick and I go back to when we were kids. We grew up together. We're about five years old. He lived across the street from me. And we've done everything together. We're closer than any brothers could ever be. I don't know anybody that has done more in their lives or remained as close as Pat and I have. We got our first jobs together as, uh, as caddies. We ended up getting our first hotel together, jobs at the Poncha Train. We went to Michigan State. We lived together. Uh, we stayed in the same industry. We still remain good friends. And we're, he, I was just a lucky guy to have a friend like Pat. And Jim Prisby. Jim is responsible for filming this right now. The guy's a uh, computer genius and a, uh, he's getting into uh, doing graphic things on the computer which are just amazing. Uh, some of you have seen probably the wedding album that he did for me which is just beautiful. And he's got, guy's got some real talent and he, we go back a long ways back to Michigan State. It seems, the crazy part is it seems like we went to four years together. We only had one year together. But we had a lot of fun, we did a lot of things, and we've stayed close and good buddies after all these years. And there's not too many people that can say that. So, Jim, uh, your friendship is, is dear to me, and I wish you the continued best in the world. Skip Barrett is another friend of mine. Skip stays here at the hotel. And a lot of you know Skip. In fact, he's the only one of my friends or family that does stay here. He's the only one that pays. Oh, the rest of my friends and family, I gotta get them free room somewhere. Skip, you keep paying, buddy. You're all right. You keep staying with us, and I'll see that you get a rate. So, I guess that's about it, gang. I uh, hope I didn't forget anybody. Uh, it makes a big difference to me because these are my friends that I've known for a long time. So I wish everybody the best and uh, do the best that you can here and make me proud of you. And I won't be... So do your best, make me proud of you, and you're going to get rid of me, I'll be back. Until then, see you later, guys. Bye-bye.
And, uh, I'm gonna get a drink here, man. Can you just hold it? I got to dry it. Okay. Yeah, I'll just keep yeah. it. Before you start up, they'll take a breath. So. Okay. <laughs> That's a good shot of Toppy right? Rabbit. God, what take is this? <laughs> we almost. Okay, you want to comb your hair a little bit? <laughs> yeah, how's that? <laughs> Alright, let's go. I'm ready. That's it. What, what, hey, what the hell's going on with the lights? <laughs> lights, camera, action. What's going on here? <laughs> I got a new studio. <laughs> shit, we're working in this cheap shit. <laughs> <laughs>